welcome to this week's episode. Today we are talking about aviation marketing for consultants, brokers, and service providers. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great people, actually. We have a number of them in our uh, in our marketing lab, and they are all really, really cool people. Yes, they are. All right. So speaking of our marketing lab, um, this is where a lot of the smartest people in the aviation industry hang out, including uh, consultants, brokers, and service providers, right? True. And uh, this is where a lot of them get a lot of their um, data and consulting and things like that to really help them uh, be at the on their A-game in terms of marketing and also in terms of, of sales and things. So we provide a lot of different tools and services at a discounted rate so that uh, basically you get all of these products and services for $2.79 a month. We try to make it as affordable as we possibly can to make that really worth it to you. All right, so um, three things that we recommend for uh, aviation consultants, brokers, and service providers. Uh, the first is to work on your ACE markers, right? Yep. Second is to build a network of the right 100 people. True. And the third is to create a holding pattern. So first, let's talk about ACE markers. And you all know about ACE markers from... World Way War back. II. Way back, exactly. And... Uh, uh. I ran across this story that's actually really amazing. Uh, this World War II ace scored kills from every Axis country and from the U.S. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, this is a story by Blake Silwell in We the Mighty, and uh, this is actually really short, So, and it's really cool. So, um, Army Armed Forces Lieutenant Colonel Louis E. Curtis uh, got a piece of every original signatory to the Axis Pact, Germany, Italy, and Japan. If that wasn't outstanding enough, it's how he got his American flag kill mark on his fuselage that earned him a place in military history and perhaps even the Distinguished Service Cross. It's not a mistake. Uh, this 20-something pilot earned every single one of his kill marks. He joined the Army Air Corps in 1942 at the age of 22 to fly planes against the Nazis. By 1943, he was a hotshot lieutenant scoring three kills against the Nazi Messerschmitt BF-109s, the work course of the German Luftwaffe in his P-38 Lightning. This was 10 days into his first assignment. Uh, within the next month, he notched up two more kills, earning fighter ace status, right? Hmm. Okay. In August of that year, he ran into an Italian Maki C-202. Did I say that right? Probably not, but that's okay. How do you say it? I don't know. Probably Moki. Moki? Okay. That shot... Uh, and shot that one down. Unfortunately, that was his last combat kill over Europe. He was shot down by Nazi planes over Italy and captured by Italians, resigning himself to spending the rest of the war in a POW camp. But that didn't happen because (laughs) Italy capitulated a few days into Curtis's internment. Curtis was then sent to the Philippines and put behind the stick of a new P-51 Mustang fighter, going up against the talented Japanese pilots. He was quickly able to shoot down a Japanese recon plane near the island of Formosa. His hat trick was complete, but that's not where the story ends. He and his plane, the Bad Angel, were fighting over the Japanese-held baton when his wingman was shot down over the Pacific. Soon after, he saw a C-47 transport plane wheels down, headed to land on the Japanese island. When he was unable to make radio contact, he tried to physically wave the transport off, but came up empty. So rather than allow the American plane and its crew to be held prisoner by the Japanese, he used the one option he had left. He shot them down over the ocean. Curtis skillfully took out one engine and then the other without blowing the cargo plane to bits. He was able to bring the C-47 down just yards from his down wigman. Curtis returned to the site the next morning as an escort to an American flying boat. The pilot crew and its human cargo were completely intact. (laughs) Did you know this story? No, I didn't. Okay. Among the passengers he shot down was a nurse Curtis dated, uh, had dated the night before. A girl named Valerie, uh, whom he later married. The story was rewritten that uh, by Colonel Air Force Colonel Ken Tolferson in his book, U.S. Army Air Force Pilot Shoots Down Wife. <laughs> Internet legends say he was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for downing an unarmed cargo plane, but his citation was actually ordered for his actions while in the European theater. 
Uh, he still wins the best How I Met Your Mother story of all time, however. <laughs> His P-51 Bad Angel is in the P- Pima Air Force or Pima Air and Space Museum in Tucson, Arizona. All right? So, um, pretty cool, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, as uh, sales and marketing people, our ace markers are not quite that cool and usually not quite that memorable, but they are just as important. True. Right? So, um, there's an article on aviation sales training, uh, which is our sister uh, website, aviationsalestraining.com. Uh, that is 17 ways aviation salespeople can establish authority, credibility, and expertise. And among those things, you know, there's 17 of them, so I'm not going to tell you all of them. You can um, read the article, and it includes links to things with uh, more information about each of these. But um, things that you can do to build credibility, authority, and expertise in... Shooting down airplanes isn't one of them. <laughs> Actually, it is. Um, it's not on the list, but I'm sure if you have shot down an airplane and you have that as, you know, a story that you can tell in a sales meeting, that'll work <laughs> with me. You know, yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. He knows something about airplanes, right? I suppose. But we didn't include it on the list. <laughs> what is on the list are things like writing a book, um, publishing press releases, publishing articles, um, being active in organizations, public speaking, and things like that. Um, Those are the kinds of things that people will look at and say, you know, this person really knows what they're doing. And if you've done those things, it's not enough to just have done them. You also have to paint them on the side of your plane, so to speak, and have them on your website, on your brochures, and and other things. And we guide these folks through all that. Exactly. So, um, right. So, thing number one is to have some um, ACE markers right? Mm -hmm. On the side of your plane or on the side of your whatever it is that you do business in, right? Okay. Um, Number two is to build a network. And this does not mean getting a million Facebook followers, right? (laughs) No. No. (laughs) I know a lot of people think this is what it means that, you know, that is winning uh, when you have high numbers. And it kind of is, um, you know, just in the sense that more people have heard of you, but that's about it. What we're talking about is this circle here, the second to the inside. So um, if you're just listening to this, if you're not watching, I've got a bunch of concentric circles with a tiny one with your team, a slightly larger one with 100 people, a slightly larger one with 1,000 people, and a, a really large one with your whole market. So ideally, your whole market has heard of you, and that's not really what we're talking about today. What we're talking about is this circle here, this 100 people. Um, there is a story, and I think it's from um, uh, Perry Marshall, where he talks about having the right hundred people um, is worth millions of dollars. Um, having a network of a hundred people is really all you need if you're a very successful salesperson, because they know the right folks, they're involved, they are part of the um, industry, they are the people who with the authority, credibility, and expertise to help you, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so most people spend way too much time worrying about the big circle and not enough worrying about the smaller ones, right? And so if you have a group of 100 people that you are actively working with on any given, at any given time, and that means shaking their hands, going to see them, um, you know, going to the events where they are and, you know, making sure you go to their speaking events, Um, working on projects together, making referrals to them, making referrals from them, um, you know, other kinds of things so that you're actively um, a part of their business life, right? Right. Okay. All right. So um, we've talked about holding patterns quite a bit, and you may want to have different versions of your holding pattern for different levels of your network, right? So, you know, for that 1,000 people, you may send out 1,000 newsletters, And uh, you may send out a thousand emails because that's fairly inexpensive and that's something that you can do to keep in touch with a larger group of people. But that group of a hundred is where you want to be making phone calls and shaking hands and, you know, adding more to that holding pattern, having a more intense um, activity filled holding pattern, right? True. Okay. Cool. So once again, your three things. Um, Number one, work on your ACE markers. Number two, build a network of the right 100 people. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And number three, have a really strong and activity-filled <laughs> holding pattern because not all of those hundred people or a thousand people are going to be ready to buy at any given time. And you need to have a reason to stay in touch that is not buy my product, buy my product, buy my product, right? True. Right. <laughs> okay. So um, to help you with your holding pattern, your um, hundred person network or any other thing, we have our uh, aviation sales and marketing lab, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, we'd love to have you in that because uh, John and I meet with you uh, regularly and we talk about whatever it is that you're working on and we help you apply the tools uh, that we talk about so that you have a good holding pattern so that you have a strong network so that all of those things work for you right? absolutely all right so thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week see you next time